Uh, so people will just start to join the conversation now. Uh, and the way that we're going to uh, organise today's event, guys, is I'm going to ask John to kick us off um, and talk about LNG's involvement, obviously, with, uh, with the city. Uh, and the new investment. Then I'm going to bring Chris into the conversation to talk about Bruntwood's involvement in that partnership. Um, Claire, I'm going to ask you then to come in and talk about the plan uh, that was put together this week and how obviously the Knowledge Quarter is an integral part in, into that. Uh, and Colin, if you can sweep up behind. Stephen, I don't know whether you wanted to talk First, and welcome people as the chair of the MIPAN delegation. Would that be yeah. the, the most suitable thing to do? And that's yeah, great. Yeah. Right. So, Stephen will go first, then I'll bring you in, John. Um, John. Sure. Um, um, uh, I'm looking forward to a really positive I'm looking forward to a really positive Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah, I think you've so. met John coming. The day after they win the, uh, the Premier League as well. <laughs> I mean, how on earth, how on earth, you managed to time this in such a <laughs> such a way? <laughs> God is a scouser. That's all I can say. God is a scouser. <laughs> Chris, you will know. Very sorry, Chris, but I'm not really. So, <laughs> if I could have timed it any other way, I, I certainly would have. But, but never mind. Um, right, I think. Yeah. I, I think most people have joined us now. So, uh, can I welcome everybody to? Uh, this Liverpool MIPIM uh, event and uh, delighted to be joined by an esteemed guest list this morning, uh, including John Cummins, who's the Managing Director of Future Cities for Legal and General, uh, Claire McColgan, who will be well known to everybody on the call. She's Director of Culture Liverpool, of course. Colin Sinclair, who's the Chief Executive of the Knowledge Corp. Chris Oglesby, Chief Executive of Bruntwood. And of course, Stephen Cowperthwaite, who is the chair of the MIP and Liverpool Group. We're going to have a conversation this morning about that fantastic news that came through uh, just over a month ago now about Liverpool securing some uh, really important investment for our knowledge core. So before I bring Stephen in as the chair of the MIP and Liverpool delegation, can I just uh, take this opportunity of congratulating all the Liverpool supporters who are on the call uh, this morning for your fabulous uh, premiership victory. It was well deserved, I have to say, uh, through gritted teeth as blue. Uh, but the consolation, of course, for all of us who have businesses in the city is that it's a great boost to our economy. Uh, and as Joe Anderson said this morning, uh, great news in that respect. Uh, and also, uh, I've had lovely messages this morning from uh, the mayor and business leaders in Oslo who say that it's going to be a fantastic boost to their city as well uh, and they just can't wait for the easy jet flights to get up and running again uh, so that they can come and celebrate with you lot uh, at Anfield. That being said Stephen I'll bring you in and it's to see you wearing your red shirt mate so good morning to you. Good morning good morning and um, yeah th thanks for the intro and uh, truly gritted teeth there Frank. Well, but no so, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ignore the Oslo comment as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, so, so uh, I mean, it's really good to, to uh, get obviously get the MIP and partnership together. Um, I can't believe where the time has gone since we should have been in Cannes back in March. Um, but we've obviously been pretty busy behind the scenes in terms of the, the steering group and great work with, with Liz, Julie, uh, Rachel as well. So, I mean, really today is a, is a good example of what we've been trying to do in terms of, you know, look, look at themes and... and uh, you know, really put Liverpool on a on a global stage in terms of what we're what we're talking about. And for me, you know, the Science Tech deal is a really good example uh, of that. And I think it was fabulous news to, to achieve that during during lockdown as well. It was really really good news for the city. Um, and then and then timing wise, not just Liverpool's win last night, uh, the, you know, Frank with the title, but I think you know the launch of the recovery plan yesterday. I, I see across the Avis and Young network how other cities are responding and it's fair to say that Liverpool is very much at the forefront of, of what we're doing and I think um, you know that strong, decisive, bold leadership that we've seen this week has been really, really good. It's great for the city, it's great for the region um, and, and it's absolutely what we want to talk about as a, as a partnership from a, you know, 
And Mipping, we've, we, you know, we've said Mipping's not about a week in can, it's about a whole 12 month program. And, and today is the start of a series of webinars that we'll be looking at over the course of the next few months to touch base with the delegation and continue to run some of the important themes uh, for us. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for the introduction. Obviously, I'll bring you uh, back into the conversation uh, towards the, the end of the session today. Um, but I want to kick off with uh, a contribution from John Cummins. John, as I mentioned, is the Director for Future Cities at Legal and General. Um, and the investment package that was announced, uh, Stephen's referred to it as well for Science Tech, is, has been a huge boost uh, for the city. John, for those who don't know, is a, a scouter. He's also a Liverpool supporter as well. So he's uh, fairly chipper this morning. John, welcome to the... Uh, Myth and Liverpool Thank delegation you. session. Good to see you. Uh, John, do you want to just take us through uh, the reasons sure. why uh, Leeds and General see the city as, as a place where uh, investment makes sense at this moment in time? Yeah, so um, to be to be clear, Liverpool is an important city for our, not just for our JV with Brentwood, shall I Chris talk about, also an important city when we look at cities generally across the board where we invested heavily in many northern cities, Newcastle, Salford, Manchester, Liverpool, and obviously other, other cities such as Cardiff. So when we look at cities, we, what we're looking for is, is, is strong universities and strong growth, growth industries. Um, we are heavily invested in Liverpool already with the HMRC Centre and have continued to. We, we did have a, a negative experience with Royal Liverpool Hospital, as many people did, but we were the main debt investor along with with EIB, so this that was uh, that was a blow. But we, we've come back because we, we still believe in in the, the actual the, the potential of that. Can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, pen, the the real yeah, potential yeah. in the city. Uh, and though I'm a, a, a scout, you said I left when I was 18. It was one of the, the diaspora from the early 80s. Um, and though I'm a mad Liverpool fan as well, this was purely on very objective assessment of the growth potential of the, of the science quarter of the the world leading opportunities that we can see with the Royal Liverpool Tropical Health Medicine, the University of Liverpool, John Moore's University Strength in Sports Science and a very practical pragmatic council and combined authority. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. We're still okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's very much, I mean, the, the investment committee and the capital committee of LNG don't really care I'm a Liverpool fan. They, 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 they really care about the fact that we found an opportunity to do long-term investment, to create jobs, to create growth areas in cities that need to, we need to get away from the, the golden triangle and the centrality of London, Oxford, Cambridge. We need to grow and work on the, the opportunities we can see in these great northern cities. Small example, for example, uh, Oliver Wyman's, all of their desk-based research is done in Newcastle University and Newcastle graduates doctorates. So there's opportunities we can bring by working with a very go-ahead city leadership, both combined authority and council. I think the project Greyhound is a great example of coming out of the box quickly and getting that regeneration plan, which is why we're happy to assign the letter of support. And we, we were very clear in the, in the publicity as well that you know we stand behind Liverpool with our partners, especially Brentwood. And we also stand behind lots of the other northern cities because we do we've been doing investment outside the m25 corridor for quite some time and we're quite glad it's not that popular because it gives us opportunity to really create innovative capitalism and work harder with longer term relationships if you look at cardiff we put over 400 million pounds into cardiff we could see that type of opportunity long term with some of the things we can see in, in liverpool hence we've already done the hmrc so it's, it's part of a continuation and it is is purely on the fact that you've got some really great world-beating capacities in computing, material science, life sciences. Life sciences will grow even more now, and we can see the opportunity to build a place and retain the talent. Once you finish university, you don't have to do what I did, which is leave or go away to university and never come back. So, I think that's really important for for not just for the for Liverpool, but for all the north and the other areas that we can see growth opportunities away from just this. Vortex of always London swallowing the talent in the country. And I'm very feel very. Both, I know the senior manager of LNG feel very strongly about working with this. I'll stop there to take questions or to to yeah, so you might want to follow up on the UK economy. 
Yeah, John, that's that's yeah, a great John, overview of Alan Hughes' involvement in the city. To hear that there's there's no emotional uh, attachment to this investment; it's very much seen as as a business decision, and that's because Liverpool's potential and the opportunity <laughs> is clear to see. Uh, John, you did say there that you'd be happy to give us your views on what the overall situation of the UK economy is, is looking like <laughs> as far as your concern. I think that would be useful for uh, the audience today to hear. Yeah. So, as well, just FYI, I'm also chair of the Risk Committee for Lloyds Bank Corporate Markets. So, I, I sort of had, I'm still involved in, in kind of added long career in banking. So, and unlike the last crisis, this crisis obviously has come from the shutdown economy. Trying to restart that economy will be will be harder than people think, which is why your regeneration plan is so timely. We are in a very phony phony war right now. You've got over one in three and workforce on furlough, and as that furlough runs off, I would be concerned about the SME sector, not just some of the very high-profile commercial property issues, retail. As one of my colleagues said, some of those retail brands were going to die anyway, but it's more about some of the, the acceleration of the trends in retail. When you step back and look at the overall economy, we are going to have to work incredibly hard to, 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 to avoid the scarring and some of the issues that will face with a, with a very large spike in unemployment. And you, you, people are Sound like they're experts at the, the latter end of the alphabet. It's going to be a U or a V or a swoosh. The, the issue is, as you come out of the SME sector in particular, you're going to have to look really hard at trying to support that sector with either debt going into equity and, and giving, them, giving them an ability to continue to employ because some of the major sectors have already been hit. You, you know, for 4,500 jobs go to Swissport, about 10,000 jobs go in Gatwick. Gatwick's never seen job losses. So these are big numbers, and you know, some of us remember the 80s and the every Friday night going through the number of the thousands of job losses. So we're not going to, you know, we potentially could see something as dramatic, which is again why you need to, to be so on the front foot, which is what your your leaders have done in the authority. That's why we're keen to support, because we want to get the money back into some of these construction shovel-ready projects to actually start alleviating some of the, the real pressure you're going to come from this from this, when they have the cliff cliff of happening on furlough, because quite frankly, you're borrowing fifty billion pounds a month to fund this, and that, that's just not. At the moment, the Bank of England just has got a very large overdraft for, in what one sense, for for the for the government. And I think you, the yield curve does show you that there is going to be a demand for the type of things we want to do in Liverpool as as a as a group, because when you've got the ten year gilt. At 19 basis points that's not going to pay anyone's pension that just shows the dislocation in that yield curve and so and that's why you, you know when you see for example goldman sachs marcus retail bank refusing to take any more customers because people are saving so much because they're concerned about their their employment prospects we need to be even more focused on getting things done not making party political comments or about national or, or, or local government you know we we want to do we we joined with Brentwood because we we love the way they work and we also want to do work with Liverpool and the other great cities because we want to get things done so our, our CEO said we you know we we're not talkers we're doers and, and you look at the some of the things we have done it's it's a good record which I'm, I'm lucky enough to be helping along as well so I think it's that rapid action you require because I think right now you are going to see some particularly ugly job loss numbers, and that it has to be it has to be addressed rapidly, because that's when you get into the, the the issues we all know from the history of the city when when the population shrank and, and many many employers folded. John, thanks for that. And can you remind people if they want to ask a question? There's a, a a chat room at the bottom of your screen. Uh, that you can just type your question into to any of the uh, panel members this morning uh, and we'll come back to the questions at, at the end. John, for now, uh, thank you. I'll just bring uh, Chris Oglesby into the conversation. Good morning, Chris. Good to see you. And you, Frank, as always. Um, nice to be in Liverpool um, on such a historic day. And I say that as a Man City fan. 
uh, but just like just like the mayor of Oslo, um, I also am delighted that uh, that Liverpool have won the league. Uh, much to the uh, displeasure of a lot of my mates who are City fans who just don't get it, but for me, having uh, over 100 million invested in the city, um, I see uh, I see it as uh, as a hugely positive thing, and I would always like to see uh, if, 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 if City aren't winning it that, uh, that Liverpool are, although I can't say the same for my neighbours in Manchester. Um, no one so likes Man United, Chris. That, that's, that, that definitely is the intersection set in our Venn diagram. Um, so, uh, so, 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 so for me, I, I'm, I'm feeling more positive about that, uh, that 100 million that we've got invested in the city and, uh, and the hundreds of million more that we're looking to follow it uh, with both, from both ourselves and L&G as a result of the Sciontech deal. Um, a couple of factors really that are playing into that. Uh, firstly, I think when I look at the cities that we invest in, there are two, there are two characteristics that we, that we look for. One of which is a, a world beating clear strategy uh, and it's becoming more and more apparent for us that, uh, that, that the key thing for cities is to focus on what you pass at and, uh, and absolutely, uh, absolutely drive that home. And I think we're now, you know, that's been, that, that, that thinking has been emerging in Liverpool uh, over the last few years. Uh, and I think, you know, the knowledge court has been at the heart of that, but it isn't exclusively about knowledge and Claire. You know, culture is such a key part of the drivers of the city. And I know you'll, you'll talk about that going forward uh, as well. Um, but there are these true global strengths, um, coupled with a truly globally strong brand, that uh, that mean that that, that 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 actually Liverpool wants to be out celebrating those, as opposed to going out almost you know talking about itself as uh, as needing as needing sort of needing help. Um, what we're actually looking to do is oil those strengths primarily, and certainly the Greyhound bid that's gone in and the publicity around it was hugely positive and just was a completely different tone of voice to the tone of voice that uh, we, we necessarily had in terms, of, uh, in terms of that with government. And the second thing, uh, as well as the clear strategy, is that culture of collaboration. And, uh, you know, again, great cities um, um, that, 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 that we work in, um, I see that, that, you know, that culture of collaboration is so key. That's where we make, you know, one plus one plus one equal 30, never mind, uh, never mind three. And again, it's, I felt that that, that, you know, you've seen that building in the city over, over recent years. Um, Stephen, I think MIPIM has been a really important part of that, um, certainly for our sector. And it's moved away from people um, promoting individual developments, which to be frank, our individual developments over recent years themselves haven't been world-class necessarily. They've been good and there's been some good regeneration, but actually what the, 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 the topics of discussion around the sectoral skills, sectoral uh, areas that we need to get behind, that's, that's where we've been having some world-class discussions at MIPIM around the city's strategy. And that's what's got people, I think, sitting uh, and waking up to, uh, to, 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 to the possibilities. I think the other area, again, where we've seen that culture of collaboration and it's early days, I've sort of referenced it already, but is it in the relationship with government? And John said the same. Um, this pitch isn't, isn't sort of the begging bowl. It's actually going through them and saying, this is how we will help you solve your problems. We are, we are, we are, we are here to, uh, to solve the problems of the country. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and certainly I think the proposition does, does address some of the big key, uh, key areas. I think another area where that culture of collaboration is, is really important is looking beyond the boundaries of Merseyside just, and uh, you know, the, the successful strength in places bid uh, on infectious diseases, which was announced today, which Colin will talk about in more detail, but hugely, I think hugely significant in that that was a Liverpool and Alderley Park uh, based bid. And uh, where historically um, places um, across the north were competing with each other, it goes back to that sort of football analogy. I, it always does my head in that uh, that, that football fans from uh, from Manchester would prefer Chelsea to win the league rather than Liverpool. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and it's the same thing actually that often applied to sector when we've been having sectoral bids. So in things, areas like infectious diseases, there have been people fighting across the north. And almost as a result, what's happened is whilst we've been fighting, it's gone to London or the Golden Triangle. Whereas actually what we need to be doing is working collaboratively across the north on our, on our strengths. And I think that, you know, that strength in place has been hopefully with the first of many. And uh, I was on a call with uh, um, Tony Reeves and Joanne Roney 
uh, about innovation just recently and the pair of them were absolutely right how do we join ourselves up along with Cheshire to really make a very effective pitch in, uh, in, in life sciences and then the final area for collaboration which I think is so important is across um, then is back in Merseyside and is across the city region um, the knowledge quarter is a huge opportunity um, uh, which is why we're so interested in it but I think it's you know, we get it right and it has such a big impact uh, more widely across the city region. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's, there, are, there are massive um, there are massive, uh, advanced manufacturing, for instance. So I don't know why that is. Um, yeah, you can hear me all right, can you? Yeah, fine. Yeah. 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 Interference from... from right. Somebody else. Something like on. Maybe if you pop, okay. the, pop the mics on mute. Um, so anyway, yeah, the advanced manufacturing opportunities are huge. I think we'd seen uh, a, a trend towards nearshoring before uh, COVID anyway, and uh, with more and more um, manufacturing potentially moving back into the UK close to market, and there's a huge opportunity for uh, for Liverpool in in that. But then I think the what COVID has shown us is uh, is is lack of resilience in some key areas. Um, it is absolutely crazy that the government announced its new vaccines manufacturing centre in, in, in Harwell in Oxford. Uh, 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 we're working with LNG in Oxford at the moment, and yes, there's some it's a great place for research, but it isn't a great place for manufacturing. I think it's really important that we're out there ensuring that the expertise we've got in the knowledge quarter is linking in more on a wider, wider area across the city region. But also, I think the commercial, uh, the, uh, the, the, the knowledge quarter and the activities there are really going to drive on the commercial district. Uh, as well, um, which you know re-emerged as a result of it being a cheap place, cheap alternative to London for financial and professional services. But now, as the uh, as 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 the wider economy is growing again in the city region, then there's the opportunity for the financial and professional services to be doing higher value work for these for these businesses that are coming out of the the knowledge quarter as well. Um, uh, which is really then where I'd like would just like to end which is that uh, the strengths of, of Liverpool as a city has been um, almost the mutual interdependency of all of the individual elements. And when you get those individual elements collaborating, then you see the place uh, being, uh, being so much more successful. My fear with COVID at the moment is that we're not prioritizing necessarily um, each other and that people can work for, people feel they can work from home so work from home one i don't think they're being as effective and working as collaboratively but secondly as a result then that that nighttime economy that leisure economy that is so dependent upon the cultural economy that's so dependent upon people being in our cities and we can, if we've got however many people it was half a million people on bournemouth beach and yet we we're operate we're operating with less than 10 percent of people in offices working We've got our priorities all wrong, and uh, I think now we've. When the when the when the lockdown happened, uh, it was it was important that we all um, were responsible for it, protecting each other. Um, whilst we understood what COVID is, but now we understand what COVID is. Our responsibility is to each other to ensure that this interdependent economy is back up and operating again. Uh, without that, um, you know, our cities our cities won't thrive, and uh, our business Brentwood is all about creating thriving cities. So. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, hugely positive uh, about the, the macro situation um, in the city, but hugely concerned in the short term that unless we start working more collaboratively with, with each other to get the economy going, um, then all of that good work could get itself undone. Chris, thanks very much for that. Just, just a couple of points to, to pick up on, if you don't mind, mate, before uh, I ask Claire to come into the conversation. Um, Bruntwood have been around Liverpool for many, many years uh, now. I'm sure most people on the call will recognise that fact, but I think the investment that you've made into the Knowledge Quarter has obviously made your stake in the city uh, far greater than previously. But interesting point that you made there in terms of the proposition that's gone in through Project Greyhound to the government, and that was that we're now trying to switch the narrative quite rightly and... and uh, you know, I wish it would have happened a number of years ago, but it's good it's happening now. That the city is part of a solution rather than going to the government saying, we've got problems that you need to help us with. It's very much a case of, of trying to ensure that we stay on the front foot, Chris, isn't it? And have that narrative of we can help 
grow UK PLC. That's really where Liverpool needs to be positioning itself now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And um, th there's uh, a very good report that's gone into government, went into government uh, a month, about two or three weeks ago, done by a couple of professors, one from Manchester and one from Leeds, but talking about the levelling up agenda in research investment and the fact that so uh, I think it's you know it's over two and a half billion per annum um, is the gap. Uh, at the moment between the relative and nobody's saying invest less in research in uh, in London and the Golden Triangle but we need to get our fair share of that investment in research that's not that again that 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 isn't about um, the sort of that you know the, the city region being a victim it's it's about the fact that we just want to we want our fair share and we want to be treated as a uh, as, as a place that is that is really that is really going you know that is really going 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 places i think that's that, that that's really important and yeah you're right we made our first investment in waterloo 35 years ago in mm -hmm. the city which we still own today burlington house and uh and our first in the city center in the mid 90s in in queens uh the plaza was the big transformational deal for us when we acquired the littlewoods hq and uh and Colin Forshaw would kill me if I didn't mention the fact that we're, uh, we're, we're, we're hopefully about to secure planning for another £6 million investment into the, uh, into the plaza to turn it into um, one of the most uh, sort of, you know, lead, leading edge collaboration spaces in the, uh, in, in the city. So uh, we're as positive about the wider city as we are about, uh, about, about, about the knowledge quarter as well. Although unashamedly, we we feel that it was the right thing to focus significantly on the strengths in the knowledge quarter as the sort of engine of growth when uh, when the city went to uh, went to government with Greyhound because that's what's you know there are a number of other areas including culture as I said but those are the things that are really distinctive. Great, Chris. Thanks very much. I'm sure uh, we'll come back to you for uh, for questions in a while. Claire, welcome to uh, to our panel this morning. Pleasure to be here, Frank. Great to see you. I'm <laughs> delighted that you were in blue as well. It wasn't deliberate, though, just to be really clear. <laughs> but it's making me laugh, so carry on. <laughs> Claire, as Chris has referenced, that, and we're all very much aware of the fact that, you know, the city's success over the past decade or so has been very much built on culture, the visitor economy. Uh, you know, we've transformed the place on the back of uh, some absolutely amazing events, which of course you and your team have been integral in putting together. We now find ourselves, of course, in a place where it's that sector, uh, and again, Chris has referenced this, hasn't he, that has started to, to see real challenges, real problems and difficulties ahead. And I know you've been working hard as part of that team that's put the uh, Project Greyhound proposal together to ensure that we don't lose that magic, that Liverpool maintains its position and the momentum that we've had of being that cultural centre where people will still want to be coming, visiting uh, and enjoying what we've got to offer here. So do you want to just talk us through some of the ideas, proposals that you've got for us, both in terms of short term, but also perhaps looking a bit ahead as well? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's been a, a it's been a seismic shock to the kind of sector that I represent, which is um, kind of culture, visitor economy, 48% of our business rates in the city come from that come from that very sector so for a city like Liverpool it's really important that we get that back on its feet um, and I think what we've done over the last 12-15 years we've told a very singular message about culture so we've made that really at the heart of everything that we've done Mayor Anderson calls it the rocket fuel for regeneration and that's what it is because kind of just listening to the conversation there you want to track the best the brightest you know the, the smartest kind of business people you we want to keep our seven you know 70,000 students come to Liverpool every year. We want to keep those best graduates. The only way you do that is to create a city and a place that people want to live in. And I think what's interesting about the development around the city region is suddenly we've got, in some ways for the city, we've got a bigger place to play with. So if you look at kind of places where people want to live, where they want to go to school, where they want to play, you've got beaches five, ten minutes away. So I think that there's a real job for us to do as a city now to kind of open up our arms a little bit to kind of the wider offer that the city region can bring, especially when we're trying to attack, attract top talent. I think the other thing that I'd say is that the visitor economy in some ways and the ledger economy and the kind of nightlife economy, while it makes the city incredibly 
you know, vibrant, it also bring, brings a huge amount of money in. So you want those, you know, I came here, I did the opposite to John. I came here to university in the, eight, in the late 80s and I stayed. So I saw when I came here what the city was like, but the bones of the city were amazing. You know, we have got one of the most beautiful, iconic cities in the whole world. You know, you see that waterfront and you can recognize it anywhere. You know, we speak internationally all the time people recognize that waterfront. So for us, the job is, I think over the next two years, is this has been a shock. The Good Business Festival, I think, which we, which we maybe talk, pick up a bit, a bit later, is really interesting in the way that Liverpool's going to be positioned around that real essence of what good business is, around the businesses we want to attract in the city, about the way that we kind of want to legislate those businesses, to make, to kind of take the next 10 years in looking at cultural, will always be there and it will always be strong. And that will be the strength. But actually, we now need to build a new city over the next 10 years. And, we, and Liverpool works well when it has a plan. So I think Greyhound was really interesting for me because at the same time, I mean, you've got to remember as a city council, it's so lovely to hear those comments about the city council. But at the same time, we're dealing with a pandemic. So we're dealing with an international pandemic. So one half of your head is dealing with um, volunteers. Is, you know, and Tony Reeves and Joe have played an absolute blinder in this because they've had to be split. You know, one side is dealing with the health crisis and looking after the poorest people in our city. And the other half has got to be about how we look at the next 10 years, because if we don't, all that kind of downward spiral is just gonna happen. So we were really clear. I think probably from day, was it, it, it was the first week where kind of the WhatsApp started flying and we said, let's get the economic recovery together. And because Liverpool is the way it is and it's different to other places, we were able to galvanize the sectors really quickly. So we had set groups who were really working with Metro Dynamics to get the kind of plan together. Um, but also what was happening behind the scenes, which I'm really delighted with. We've always had a really good relationship with government. You know, we talk to the DCMS, which is my department, all the time. They respect us. They know what we've done. They know what we've done as a city. We've never really asked for anything. You know, we've always just done it and we've got on with it. And I think that's the spirit of Greyhound that I'm most proud of, is the fact it's not going to government saying, um, these are all the problems we need you to solve them for. We need you to solve it for us. We've gone to government and said, look, we know how to solve it. You've got incredible businesses around the table. You've got investment waiting to be waiting to go. You've got a city that has got that something that most cities would kill for, which is a really big personality. You saw it last night. You know, you'll see it. You see it when you kind of talk about any. You talk. You talk around the world. We've got that, and I think that I think that's what was really compelling for government in the fact this was a very new Liverpool that was, that, that, that was kind of going to them with a really exciting proposal and some really smart things in it. I mean, Colin was, was will be much more. Um, cognizant of the detail around the development work but in terms of the work that we did one of the things that we looked at was turning the word apprenticeship into bursary and there's a real nuance in that because apprenticeship sometimes has the the, the perception of you being 16 and and kind of going and doing that bursary has got a really different perception so if we want really great talent to stay they're, known, they're not necessarily different in terms of what they're doing but the word bursary potentially will keep those really top graduates and, and, and get them kind of working and staying in the city. So some really clever things in that, film and TV industry, pop-up studios so we can just get on with it because the demand around film hasn't stopped through COVID, it's gone on pause, but now they want studios and we're getting inundated with requests for studios to finish all that world up. Um, the whole thing we're doing around without walls. So just again, big ideas that Colin will talk about, big kind of investment ideas that are long-term and really serious, but some real practical, really practical examples to get business back on their feet. So the without walls stuff, turning that round really quickly, small grants to businesses, buying furniture, really simple idea, not being done anywhere else in the country, closing our streets off really quickly in three weeks, getting the, getting the world outside. And I think it's that absolute mixture of pragmatism, which is really important, and delivery, but also those really big ambitious ideas like European capital culture was in the, in the 1990s. You know, that was a big idea that the whole city then had to turn and face towards. That's why Liverpool One was built on time. That's why the arena was built on time. There is no doubt about that. We, you know, we, had, a, we had a deadline to work towards and Liverpool works best like that. Um, so I'm really excited about the future. I'm really excited about the stuff that I'm hearing today as well. Um, but I think what has been amazing for me over the, la over the, over the last kind of three months is just the foot on the gas that's happened around it and the absolute partnership across the city from all different sectors to make that plan really compelling. It's a really good read, which I know is, it's not a dull 
regeneration, no offence, a dull regeneration document. It is a really, really good, compelling read. And if you were someone of 22, wanted to start your own business in the city, you would look at that and go, actually, that's where I want to be. I want to be somewhere where we get an answer like that, you know, and I think that's what will come out of COVID, but we will have a very different sort of business as well. Uh, I, yeah, no, no, that was brilliant, Claire. It's a, a, a whirlwind tour of, of uh, an amazing range of initiatives that I, I know you've been involved in terms of coming up with. And the have to say to, to those uh, today who are, who are with us, that Without Walls project has captured the imagination right across the country. Wherever I'm talking now, people are asking about that and saying, how have Liverpool managed to turn that round so quickly? It takes us months to just get the local authority involved in terms of closing the streets off or in allowing licensing laws to be relaxed in that way. And that's going to be... Uh, that is, I mean, that's good leadership, now. isn't it? You know, I'm not, I, you know Joe, Joe and Tony, that is really good leadership because that was an idea that was just an idea. And actually, it's risky. We're not going to please everyone. And, but we could have just sat back and gone, oh, well, you know, that's, that's not, that's, it's too hard. And actually, no one will know because no one knew we were going to do it anyway. But that's not the way to behave when you're dealing in a crisis. The way to get out of a crisis like this, a pandemic like this, is to be really brave. And we will get things wrong on the way. You know, we will as a city, we're not going to get everything right. But then what's the point if not, you know, we've just had the worst thing that could potentially happen to the economy in all our lifetimes. What's the worst that can happen by putting tables and chairs out on the street and giving businesses, <laughs> you know, there's a context to it, isn't it? But we've got, we've got a leadership that just says yes. And then you've got to kind of work out how you do it. <laughs> it's completely I, know, well, that's, I think that's the critical piece of success in this one, Claire. And you have, you know, you've stood out completely in that is the fact that so often is the case that good leadership involves saying you're going to do something in such a way that you're committed. That means that everybody then we've got to follow in and make it happen. And, uh, and just every now and then you've got, to, as you say, you've got to take that risk. And uh, now I absolutely salute the people that have done that um, in this instance. And, uh, and again, it's just been great for the profile of the city. Here is a city that really is, you know, really, really is thinking about thinking and caring about uh, the business in the city, which is such an important, you know, such an important message at the moment when so often the message it, as a business person anyway, you, you, you know, through this crisis, you've increasingly started to feel that almost, you you know you're the you're the last uh, you're, you're the last the, the least most important um, uh, you know piece of the jigsaw. But you 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 two represent major major businesses, and I think when we were thinking about without walls, I always think about and people listening will know this Heritage Cafe on on um, Castle Street, you know, ran by kids from Coldstone School, was their absolute dream. They can put, fit about ten people in their place. How on earth are they going to get back on their feet unless the city goes? Your dream is just as important as yours you know and and we've got to we've got to help you we won't be able to do it forever because we haven't got the resources to do it forever but it was really important to the city that those tiny businesses that make you attract great talent because they want to eat in those places that we that, that we support them it's, it's important it's important for the independent sector great Claire thanks a lot as I say I'm sure we'll we'll come back with uh, with some questions for you uh, Mr Sinclair good to see you this morning yeah good morning Frank and yeah. everyone yeah, uh, there's a thunderstorm outside here so I don't know if that's a metaphor for what's going to happen economically if we get a second spike on the virus but I think it's feel all feels very electric in my dining room right now <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the appropriately red wall Frank I know how pleased you are for us but, well well I hope that's reference to Liverpool Football Club and not the government's red wall that they smashed a few months ago um, but but listen, let's not uh, get the, the ball out again. I want to talk about this huge investment that's coming into uh, the part of the city that you, Colin, have been so instrumental in developing over the past couple of years. It's always been top of the agenda when we've gone to, to MIPIM, MIPIM UK, because th there's such innovative, exciting, dynamic stories to talk about. And, and as Chris has said earlier you know those world-class developments a lot of them can take place and will take place in the knowledge course so how important is this support from lng and bruntwood uh, and equally uh, you know your thoughts on the plan which i know you've been involved in putting together as well well i don't think you can emphasize enough the importance of 
of what we're planning to do with Chris, John and colleagues at Frontwood Legal in general and how important the timing of all of this is, you know, with a new economic paradigm we face. And I've always said you're only as good as the people you work with. And if you work with great leadership and you can articulate a vision and tell a really compelling story about a city and the change you want to make, then you can get somewhere. So, you know, I really felt in the in the, the four years I've been back full time in in Liverpool. Um, you know, I, I think the, the teamwork is fantastic. And I think Claire summed that up brilliantly. You know, we just got on and did uh, the economic recovery plan. Um, I think everybody realised that if we don't do something now, not only could Liverpool face a return to the dark days and 1980s, but so could the country. So you have to get on the front foot on it. And we have to create employment now. I think that's absolutely critical. I know um, Keir Starmer was talking about 3 million unemployed. It could be 4 million unemployed. So what are we actually going to do about that? Uh, what does that mean for Liverpool, uh, where, you know, where I work um, at the Science Park? So I think, first of all, we have to look at what had made Liverpool great again in the last few years, what had re-established it as a global brand. And much of that has been culture and the visitor economy. So we had to safeguard that. And whether it's Liverpool without walls or the work on immersive technologies, we had to concentrate on the visitor economy, the creative industries, the film industry, and those things that have got the city back to where it should be as a global brand. Um, and I think we've done a great job of that. And I think, as Claire said, you know, people rallied behind that. And you know, it's pretty impressive to see. But I think we also need to focus on the other thing that's driven the economy, which is our knowledge economy and our universities. And if Liverpool's going to succeed in future, we need to keep our graduates. We need to attract the best graduates from everywhere else, but we need to keep them. It's quite interesting when you look at it. If you look at the exponential growth of Manchester, um, that was founded on that graduate talent pool from the universities. And yet we export our graduates to Manchester, London and other cities if we can keep those we can provide the occupiers of the future and i think people will need to return to offices i agree with chris entirely on that you you, you can do so much on zoom but you can only really do innovation face to face yeah. so we need those future occupiers and our graduates and our cultural economy is what will pull those people into the city and keep them in the city but we do need jobs now i think that's really vital and so uh, Project Greyhound, or, it, or it's now called Liverpool's Economic Recovery and Renewal Plan, a bit more formal. Um, <laughs> yeah, not as sexy that though, is it? Yeah, I, I didn't get a say on that name in the end. Because, um, <laughs> you know, uh, brand is everything, and we didn't quite get that bit right. But what, what, what we can do now is get jobs now. We spent two years procuring Scientech. It's unique in the country. We did a share transaction like nobody had ever done before. We had a competitive process and Brookwood SciTech had to work really hard against some fantastic competition. We had global funds bidding with other developers for this and Brookwood SciTech were the best bidder in the end by far. And that procurement process means we can get construction on the ground now. So whether it's at Paddington Village or Coppers Hill, or through extending Liverpool Science Park, we can get construction jobs underway this year. Not just construction jobs, but training and apprentices. And I think that's along with safeguarding our cultural economy, creating those new jobs in construction, and then with new occupiers is going to be critical. This is about people's lives and livelihoods. And I think our priority has to be around keeping our businesses alive, and creating those new jobs. Uh, and in terms of um, the the plan, how it goes forward, Colin, we had a conversation yesterday. I think it was with business leaders group in terms of how we market this. And you you've just referenced uh, marketing and branding being very important. And I've always thought that the initiatives that you've been involved with have always been smart, packaged, and marketed. Uh, the things that we ought to be doing as a city um, to say, look, 
Liverpool is the place to be now. It is different. We've got these big investors coming in. We've got these great opportunities and this potential going forward. How are, are, are we able to sell that? And the reason I mention that, Colin, is, of course, MIPIM is an integral part of that journey, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when, when, you know, when, I, when I came over to Liverpool from Manchester four years ago, the knowledge quarter didn't exist. Paddington Village hadn't started. And the city had only just, you know, through the work of people like Stephen and others, had only just really got back into going to MIPIM. So this, you know, we're on a journey here and we're quite near the start of it. We've had the knowledge quarter for four years. Liverpool's only been back at MIPIM for a, a similar kind of time scale. So this is the beginning of a whole journey. And uh, with Claire and others, you know, we're working really hard to get the brand of Liverpool as a city, as a city region right to tell a really compelling story about a city regenerated on culture and tourism, but now powered by this, by this knowledge economy, by science and tech. Uh, but I do think, and it's been mentioned a couple of times, and we've really got to concentrate on where we're good already. I think that 18 million pounds strength in places bid is brilliant. I think it does something really important that we often don't talk about, particularly you know, when you get into, into football rivalries. We've got to put Liverpool, Manchester and Cheshire together. We've got to market them together whenever we can because it's a much stronger global offer as one than it is individually. And you, you'll notice that strength in places bit was about Liverpool and Cheshire, you know, at School of Tropical Medicine, the university and Oldley Park working together. I think that's really important. Um, I mean, it's also noticeable that everything we're working on is relevant to now, to this crisis we're in. Liverpool University this week was rated, was listed as third only to UCL and Oxford University for COVID-19 research. That's happening right now you know, in Liverpool Science Park. Integrated data, the work of people like Professor Ian Buchan and uh, Dr. Amanda Lamb creating the Hill, a world leading medical institute. Um, that, that's part of our bid, that bid around integrated health data. And all of that ties into things that John mentioned too, LGMU and sports science, immersive tech, the work of the MTC now at Liverpool Science Park in robotics and artificial intelligence. Uh, huge plans and, and ambitions, but all focused on where we're really good and where we can work in a complementary way with our neighbours down the M62. I think that's that's really important. Cities can't work in isolation. We have to work in partnership. Thanks, Colin. Just remind people, if you do want to ask questions, don't be shy. Just type your question into the chat room there and we'll come to the question. But John, just picking up on the points that Colin made there and the importance of collaboration and partnership, uh, we did talk about you know, those people that have been brought together for this initiative, uh, Bruntwood LNG uh, and Scientech initiative is based all on partnerships. But equally, um, with that Future Cities hat on, uh, are you expecting to see greater collaboration now across regions, uh, as has been described by Chris and Colin? You're on mute, John. So if you just unmute yourself, that would help. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, apologies. Someone muted me, so I was happy to be staying mute. Um, I also think the thing we haven't mentioned, which is going to be very appropriate to this this body, is you're going to see collaboration also from the local authority pension funds, because there there is a, and I've I've said this to another meeting once before. I mean, you can talk all you want about going to Nippon to meet China and overseas investors and forest. And, you know, I went to China 22 times to speak to the Chinese central bank and. <laughs> FX reserves because they got three trillion dollars. You got to be nice to them, but there is a huge interest in long-term sterling real assets from from not just people like LNG, but the, the, your own local authority pension funds, your own your own UK-based investors, and and that is going to be something which we need to be thoughtful of and work together collaboratively. And I think the Alderley Park, the Paul Manchester Triangle, it needs, and obviously we're biased because we're you know, we're, we're, we're part owners as well, but you can do so much more along that M62 corridor. And, and I know Chris has said this as well, that, you know, there's no point talking about more than MIT. You've got one in, in, in sort of in parts. So you can just make it collaborate more. We put an investment into Edinburgh university 
uh, Aging Research Centre, and they are very close links to, to Newcastle, for example. So we made a twenty million pound investment there. To, to obviously, aging is very important to our to our balance sheet. So, but we we do think we have a great great skills in Liverpool and Manchester across the board. And as you collaborate, I mean, the cities by themselves will just get into a race to the bottom for competition. When if we call up collaborators, you've you've described you can actually have far more bang for your buck because what people forget is it was governments who founded the internet. It was a US research spend across the board in, in the defense industries actually created a lot of these industries. Now Trump's saying you don't need that spend, but that, we need to make sure we're not, it's not a, a special request. We're just saying we want the first share of money to go to the North. Otherwise, you know, it's just going to get swallowed in that golden triangle. And that's just, that's not actually healthy. I mean, right now we have a we also have a JV with Oxford University, uh, and we've committed four billion pounds over ten years. Half of the commitment is for key workers because we they can't afford to live there. That's never been an issue in the north, and that that kind of getting that space and, and the investment in the north and getting the research spend, which will create the the collaboration and the cluster effect, is something which is which is important. So we can collaborate on things which are not just about getting the universities combined but also there's a there's firepower within your own region with the with the pension funds and you know i've already offered to tony and to claire and everyone that you know, I, I know we as an institution i personally know a lot of the the leaders of in in the city of these places and, and they are keen to to do more but when we had the, that really good lunch for liverpool in the city we, we we need to follow up more more proactively you need to follow up really focused on what why else can you bring in as opposed to once a year we just we have a nice speech and I'm not, I'm not at all being criticized you just you've got to follow up it's a follow which differentiates you and that's why i think you, you just the great work that's all being done in project greyhound we can build on so i think there's really good opportunities not just with the collaboration with universities which one would have lent led but also some of the, these other things i've mentioned as well in terms of financial collaboration thanks john that was, thanks. Great contribution and couldn't agree more in terms of that collaboration partnership and more importantly, I think the thing that you've said at the end there, at the follow up uh, and ensuring that those relationships that do start to get developed are, are then turned into something really positive. I think we've stunned our audience into silence this morning. This is the problem with Zoom. I'm not able to just go into an audience and pick on people to ask questions. The hang, the hungover. Mate, they're not stunned into silence, they're just yeah. hung over. Either through celebration or commiseration, perhaps. But before I bring Paul, uh, Stephen in to, to just wrap up uh, in terms of what next for our MIPIM delegation, um, in fact, uh, just as I say that, somebody types a, a question in. Um, and it's actually it's not a question, it's a comment about... Uh, somebody being massively supportive of the can-do approach that Liverpool have taken with its plan, which is good to see. But Chris, just a final point on this, because I know that you know we've talked an awful lot about the collaboration between Cheshire, Liverpool and Manchester, and obviously in the context of the conversation today uh, is understandable. Um, but I know Bruntwood, uh, like downtown in business, very keen to see the continued development of devolved government powers right across the Northern Powerhouse. And of course, that includes Leeds and includes Newcastle that John's mentioned a couple of times as well. Uh, and of course, that capacity, that volume uh, of uh, places, cities, gives us an even bigger opportunity if we can get our act together, doesn't it? Sorry, Chris, you're on mute yeah. now. Yeah, huge, huge opportunity. And uh, I think what we've got to do is to take advantage. Again, I mean, I... Is that saying never waste a good crisis? Um, it's going to it's going to have a huge toll on us, but uh, but ultimately it does create an opportunity as well. I think one of the crisis, things the crisis has indicated shown again is that we're too over centralised in the UK. Uh, the Economist wrote a very damning article last week about the government. The, the FT ran it a couple of weeks before, uh, comparing us to the more federal uh, countries that have been able to act more nimbly because they've had greater devolution. So, yeah, I mean, Collins talked about the importance of patient data. The fact that in Liverpool, you don't know where you've got a, a hot spot or an outbreak for sort of a week, 10 days until after, until after it's happened because that data is held centrally. 
um, is, uh, is, is absolutely crazy. So we, 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 we feel we should be using the crisis again as an opportunity to push for more devolution because I think it's highlighted just how over-centralized we are as a country. Um, there is the talk about some form of northern growth body at the moment, and I know there are mixed views about that across the north because there's a view that it may add an extra level of, uh, of government. I think if we can ensure that it isn't a level extra level of bureaucracy, but actually um, we're getting new government in the north, new powers in the north, then actually the northern cities should row behind it. Um, we've got our informal arrangements around uh, the collection of the LEPs and the, uh, the, the northern powerhouse partnership and things, but actually if we could get a northern growth body that was focused on helping aggregate industries as we've identified things like uh, the um, infectious diseases, et cetera, then that's got to be a real winner as well as obviously pushing for those pan-Northern transport uh, uh, projects as well. Um, and, then, and then just, as I say, going back to that, turning this crisis into an opportunity, there's that sort of classic Lenin quote, which everybody's rolling out at the moment, um, nothing happens for decades and then decades happen in weeks. Mm -hmm. And there is this opportunity for us to make decades happen in weeks by moving quickly on a number of things. One of our big concerns has been that we got in reference in the 1980s and I see the potential for, uh, the, um, for, 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 for COVID to drive, uh, drive us into another 1980s style recession. I actually feared it was coming anyway. You and I, Frank, have talked about this a lot about the fourth industrial revolution as, as being you know, very similar to the deindustrialization de of the North if we're not careful because a lot of those low value services jobs that we've created in our deindustrialization phase are, are going to go again um, and so well, we want to work collaboratively with government and we absolutely do I think that message has got to be you know the 1980s happened on your watch um, you know your strategy was get on your bike as Norman Tebbit articulated and then you sent Michael Heseltine up you know five or six years later to try and clear up the mess and uh, this time round you know work with us to make sure that we don't end up with that same mess we ended up with last time uh, but this time round, we're very clear about what our strengths are. We've got a plan, um, you know, work with us on that plan, but we must hold them to account. So when I say we're working collaboratively with government, that doesn't mean that we're just sitting back and being passive. We're, we're really, really driving them. But I think that, you know, going back to that, you know, for 30 years, for somebody to mention, um, you know, that they might, they might have some slight conservative leanings in the north and you were a pariah. Uh, the, the brand is uh, the brand is one that is being completely and utterly undermined in the north. And whilst we, you know, we might have our own political political views, I think playing playing to that has got to be really, really important through this period. Chris, thank you. Ironically, a couple of questions come up just as we're about to wrap the session up, and I'm going to finish at eleven because people have got. Uh, busy diaries I know and, and just uh, thanks for the questions that come in though and we hopefully have, have answered at least part of them uh, during the contributions today. Colin's left us because he's had a, a power cut uh, in his neck of the woods so he's not been able to stay with us. I'm going to ask Steve to, to wrap up in a second. One point I will make and I think this is important uh, in terms of the MIPAN delegation particularly it is that um, listen we're a very strong uh, Labour administration here in Liverpool uh, and of course political statements are made from time to time uh, but I think it's hugely important that uh, the business community take uh, a, a huge lead uh, in these conversations narrative with governments and Tony Reeves uh, and also uh, Mike Emmerich who's been involved in putting this plan together and Claire's mentioned as well been working really hard to develop those relationships in Whitehall and with uh, government uh, because uh, whatever as Chris has rightly said your party politics are uh, the fact of the matter is that we do need to work with central government and we need to ensure that we've got a constructive relationship with those guys uh, so that we can get the resources uh, that we need into the city and the city region uh, and uh, nobody else uh, on the panel uh, should be asked to make this point uh, so I will uh, I think it's really important that our political leaders uh, from the city and the, the wider city region are perhaps a little bit more circumspect in, in the comments that they make uh, going forward. And uh, I make that comment that I have made privately to, uh, to Joe and Steve as well. So um, nothing uh, that uh, I've said here today that I wouldn't repeat to them. 
And I think they're mindful of the fact that if you look at the success that we always talk about uh, in Liverpool, uh, and that's Manchester, um, then, you know, Manchester's been a Labour authority for many more years than Liverpool has. And it's always managed to get the balance right between those conversations and those constructive criticisms that politicians inevitably make. So I think that's an important message that I'd like to put out there. Um, always good to have a bit of controversy at a downtown event, even if it's a remote one. And Stephen, I'll just ask you to talk about you know, where we're going now with the MIPM delegation in Liverpool. What's planned next as we look forward to hopefully, fingers and everything else crossed, uh, going back to Cannes in March 2021. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Frank, let me just pick up on that theme of uh, collaboration and, and, you know, the idea of the biz business leaders um, having a say in the conversation and supporting the public sector. And I think that's very important. And what the MIPIM partnership gives is a, it's a conduit to be able to have those sorts of discussions. And I think it's important that our, you know, our partners engage with us. Uh, as I say, I, I come back to the point that this is MIPIM's not about a week in, in Cannes, it's about a whole 12 month program. And I think it's important that we come come together. And certainly it's something that, that we did. We used we used the MIPIM brand as part of the you know recovery conversation where I got together some of the key stakeholders, so the likes of Colin Sinclair, uh, we had Broadwood, Peel, Auger, um, you know, CTP. So looking at those major projects across the city. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that's probably the first time that that's really happened in terms of the key development stakeholders across the city coming together. And it was a really positive, positive thing to be able to do. So mo moving forward, um, you know, we, we've worked hard. As, as I said, Rachel, um, Liz and Julie have been working hard to put together a series of events that will be, will be coming out soon in terms of new dates. Um, obviously, we want to gear ourselves up, hopefully, to return to Cannes next year uh, in whatever form that may be um, but I think you know you, you take out what we've talked about today Liverpool really is in a positive position um, with, notwithstanding the fact that you know we are still in the, in the, in the midst of a crisis but I think to, we, we have to build on that positivity get that message out there keep getting that message across um, you know through all of our conversations both with public sector, private sector, and, and with governments as well, I think is key. Uh, come back to that point that, you know, this is not Liverpool asking uh, for help. It's it's Liverpool saying we're getting on and doing stuff. Um, and I think it's brilliant to see that partnership uh, in action. And that's what we want the MIPIM delegation to be, is, as I say, a conduit to have those sorts of conversations. So, so yeah, keep, keep an eye on your inboxes for more information. And uh, there'll be a series of webinars. But can I just say to thank the panellists today, because I think it's been a really, really in interesting conversation and a very positive conversation as well. Stephen, thanks very much. And uh, let me echo those comments. Thanks to John, to Claire, to Chris and to Colin. Glad that Colin could come back for the final moments. Hope the thunderstorm doesn't uh, have a, a long lasting sustainable power cut effect on, on where you are, mate. Listen, it's been great to see you all today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for those uh, questions and comments, Sean Keyes and David Topham in particular. Uh, which we, uh, I think, as I say, have covered in the contributions that people have made. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you hopefully on Monday morning for uh, the next Downtown in Business event, which is with the Mayor of Liverpool, Joe Anderson, and the leader of Manchester City Council, Richard Lees. And I'm sure those guys will have lots of interesting things to contribute to the discussion, uh, and both of them. Uh, will be wearing blue shirts, I'm sure. <laughs> so thanks very much, guys. See you all again very soon and uh, have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.